This little sliver of brain here is the area that we were trying to protect. We worked with you on your breathing so that your brain wouldn't come all the way out of your head. Dan is a professional musician. He is also a music teacher, and he had a very unusual, almost out-of-body experience. He started hearing things and seeing things that weren't there. Reality was here, and the visions and the audio that I was experiencing was also here. My mind was like fighting over, okay, which is real, and it ended. He had an MRI scan of his brain, which revealed a relatively large tumor in an area that is involved with sophisticated hearing and musical function. <laughs> you don't say. He expressed how concerned he was about losing his musical ability. In Dan's words, music is my life. There's been an explosion of technology that allows us to study the human brain non-invasively. Functional MRI or magnetic resonance imaging is one of the main technologies that's used in this regard. This allows us to create maps of brain function. We could map mathematical skill, the ability of a patient to use tools, to name objects, to read. All of these functions were available to us to map prior to surgery. Some patients then have what's called an awake craniotomy or an awake mapping procedure during the surgery, during which time critical functions can be mapped in real time by the surgeon who is stimulating the brain with a bipolar electrode while the patient is performing tasks. We knew that Dr. Pilcher was planning to do an awake uh, mapping session with Dan. So we devised a series of tests that could be done during functional MRI but also with an eye to, toward an eventual awake mapping session in the operating room. My lab doesn't have any particular expertise in mapping music, so we called our colleague, Dr. Betsy Marvin, at the Eastman School of Music. I'm trained as a music theorist. Um, my research area, though, is music cognition. We talked about what is it that helps us to remember music and to process it. In consultation with Dr. Marvin, we came up with this test uh, in which the patient would hear a piano melody and would then have to hum the piano melody back. My job was to listen to him humming and to say whether it was right or wrong. We interleaved uh, repetition of spoken sentences with repetition of piano melodies. You're gonna hear either a melody or a sentence and then you're gonna repeat it back out loud. We've spent many days with him prior to surgery getting functional MRI scans of his brain. We could then construct a map millimeter by millimeter with great accuracy of where music was located in relationship to this tumor. The most assured way in the operating room to know that his music abilities were intact would be to actually have him play his instrument. Uh, during your surgery, you're gonna be laying down on your left side. That's never how you would play a saxophone, so we really had to be creative in how is this gonna work. I had far less movement, far less freedom with the fingers on both hands. It was such an awkward angle, and it worked. And he brought it in to play for this team of nurses and doctors and uh, experimenters and me. And you could see the alarm on the nurse's face. Uh, she said, if you play this piece, which has some long sustained notes in it, the pressure of the wind and the performance on the saxophone will make your brain protrude. So Dan and I worked to modify the piece. Can you make that first note shorter? Da, 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 da. Kind of like that? Yeah, I think that, okay. sounds, that sounds great. The scene in the operating room is pretty incredible because here you have a young man um, with a tumor in the right side of his brain, lying on the operating table, with his brain exposed, completely awake. We have a very fancy brain lab stereotactic equipment. And once we get to the tumor, uh, we can then map the portions of the brain uh, that are responsible for his uh, musical abilities. Uh, and then we can avoid damage to those parts of the brain while we're taking out the tumor. Dan uh, heard similar piano melodies that he heard during functional MRI scanning. <laughs> Doc 
Dr. Marvin uh, was in the operating room scoring the patient's performance in real time. We were continuously testing him to see if anything we had done impacted his musical abilities. I would stimulate a region of brain uh -huh. uh, that we felt was responsible for music right. to try to interfere with the ability of your brain to hear the note and to, okay. to hum a note correctly. Okay. You touch here, melodies are fine. You touch here, melodies are completely disrupted. He was unable to repeat these piano melodies. But if he had to repeat a spoken sentence, he had no trouble. <laughs> and then we got to the final part of the tumor resection, which we knew was immediately adjacent to the area which was responsible for his musical talent. We felt very confident and removed the final portion of this tumor. After taking a deep sigh of relief, we asked him to take out a saxophone. So we handed it uh, to Dan. And he played it really flawlessly. It was beautiful. <laughs> We have brought the cognitive science laboratory into the operating room. Every patient where we think there's an opportunity to improve the outcome for that patient, uh, we ask Dr. Mann to take a look at that patient. Every time we do an operation, we have an opportunity to learn something more about the brain. And that information makes the operations we will do in the future all the more successful. I went back to work just over a month after the surgery. We are a year out from his surgery. Um, he's teaching, he's playing his instrument. He feels that his musical talents are at least as good as they were uh, prior to surgery. And uh, he does not have seizures anymore. His tumor is gone and he has his entire life ahead of him.